Well, that was a wonderful waste of uh, time. I forgot to hit record. This is a simple exploit to bring the temperature down um, in your base. Uh, I don't know if it's already been uh, mentioned anywhere, but I'll show it again. Right now, the uh, internal temperature of this 3x3x3 square is uh, 312 degrees Celsius. And the temperature is being reduced by about um, 1.1 degree every uh, every two seconds, so about uh, 0.05 degrees every second. And I just realized I did a calculation wrong. So all that we're doing is we're ch we're starving the waste and input pipe of um, of gas which means that this, this, this pipe never um, increases its temperature. It's always the base temperature of the gas being sucked into it. And it happens to work at 21 liters per second. If I put it up to 22 right now, it might still work. Yeah. If I put it up to 23, if I put it up to 24. It depends on what the temperature uh, your input temperature is because that uh, dictates the uh, density of the gas that was too much Or 28 liters. So 27 liters right now is fine just because of the density of the gas. It was at 21 uh, 21 liters per second or per tick when um, the temperature was 400 degrees Celsius. But now we can we can pick it up because um, our density has gone down. So it will always this. Um, machine will always read the temperature right now as uh, 306 degrees Celsius because that's what it's being injected into it. Now I don't know exactly how many moles there is in here and I don't care to find out. And it will do its little uh, black box work and then spew it out. In fact this RTG should be uh, generating heat as well but it is not. This is, this is a purely um, God uh, machine. It's a God machine. So uh, now that I've figured out that I've, I've done my calculations wrong, I have to change there. So what we're doing, I think that's correct, what we're doing is we're, we're removing about 500 watts of energy from this room per second, um, which sort of matches how much we're drawing, because I think we're drawing 500 uh, watts of, uh, of electricity. Yeah, we're drawing, drawing 500 watts of electricity. So I guess that's kind of balanced in the game, huh? So this thing, so the efficiency of the air conditioner is based on um, uh, resisted heat. So, like, uh, your your baseboard heater, your electric heat would be a COP of one, a COP of one, um, and then depending on other kinds of things that you use, it's it's greater than one. So, anyways, so that's that's how that works. It's cheaty, and um, I am not. Uh, ashamed of using the cheat at all because this um, this air conditioner unit does not work the way uh, real world air conditioners work. In a real world uh, air conditioner you'd have a condenser coil outside that a compressor would shove gas into and just as much as it could and, and bleed off the heat 
um, from uh, that would that would uh, collect simply by compressing the gas. I'm almost 100% certain this game doesn't um, um, doesn't uh, model that. I think that I've I've uh, transferred gases into into pipes pretty uh, rapidly, and there was no um, there was no thermal change when I did that. But so and then the, as the state changed outside from a gas to a liquid, it doesn't really need to change to a liquid. It just needs to change to a more dense gas because all uh, matter is gas or all matter is a liquid it's 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 not a uh, gases are just really spread apart liquids and solids are just really condensed liquids because everything flows in um, some form or another even solid steel flows that's what bending is it's a flow anyways so as soon as you do that um, and you've rejected energy outside, you come in and you use an expander valve that just spits out a little bit of the gas at a time. And as the little as that gas expands into the partial vacuum that you've made from by the with the compressor, it will um, absorb energy from this room and then you you blow a fan over the coil. Just so you push as much energy as you can. Now, the way most people think of of energy and and um, and heat, it's kind of hard because you know we're also talking about Americans, which are kind of weird. But most of the world imagines zero degrees Celsius, the point where water freezes, as cold that's that's the that's once you pass zero degrees uh, celsius most people agree that is cold so to imagine to take heat out of something that is already cold um is kind of not intuitive but if you look at everything as degrees kelvin where zero is absolute zero and water freezing is like around 250 degrees i can't remember what it is it's like it's between 250 and 270 degrees i can't be bothered to look it up and i never remember what the um what the conversion rate is for it but if you look at it that way you have um 200 degrees of heat that you can suck from one area to another and that's exactly how uh, heat pumps work and as long as the working gas that you're using in it um, doesn't freeze solid um, at the at the minimum temperature that you're using the temperature that you're uh, using in the expander coils um, and is a gas at your and can and can um, Uh, and can state change at your lowest temperature I said that backwards if it can state change at the lowest temperature it can steal it can steal heat from from that uh, that area so like if you had a refrigerant that was let's let's pick like a really low one like uh, minus 25 degrees Celsius that's a lot of um, air conditioners for cars and stuff like that they use uh, um, R22 or something like that and uh, it has um, uh, a, vaporiz a vaporization point of 23 degrees Celsius I believe somewhere around there that's this this those might not be the exact um, the exact figures but it's close to that so what that means is if it's if it's above minus 23 degrees outside the gas will be able to easily change states and, l and raise the temperature inside your space inside this space here and quote unquote lower the temperature outside now because outside is such a is such a huge thing 
the effect that you're having on the environment is is massively minimal but that's what it's doing it's heating up the outside to cool the inside and if this were to work the way it was supposed to that's what it would do you'd have you'd have a something like a mini split or you would have like um, you would just have two pipes and neither pipe would would uh, communicate gas between each other and you would just need gas outside or gas inside or you would have just two pipes with um, radiators stuck onto it and then you like have a working gas thing sort of like how the Stirling engine works. The Stirling engine is is more like a, a, a heat pump than anything else in the game. But this is just made the, the way that the, the, the way that the developers design this is just to make your life harder. It is not realistic in any way, shape, or form. And that's how I justify cheating, using exploits. And if they wanted to fix this, it would introduce other problems. Like they could say they could tell this uh, this machine not to function if this pipe was empty. Now all that would do is just make it shut down for a tick. That's it. So it would it would suck in the gas. Uh, it would it would do its work, and then it would spit it out, and then it would see that it was empty, and then stop. And then the pump would fill it. The next tick, it would see that it was full. It would suck the um, the the, uh, the gas in, do its work, spit it back in. Um, they could also do a constant check, saying it, there constantly has to be uh, an amount of, of gas in here. But I think that the workarounds would be would not be complicated, whatever they try to do with this. And that's because it is not realistic. Again, the Sterling engine is about the is the one thing that's probably the most realistic in, in the game uh, when it comes to things like heat pumps and. All it is trying to do is move thermal energy from one area to another, and as the thermal energy moves through it, um, it generates uh, an amount of electricity with that with that passage of, of whatever, with that passage of, of heat. So, right now, I don't think there's a way to cheat the Stirling engine, but if there is, I'm going to try to find a way. And, um, like, I mean, the first 10 seconds of this video told you everything you need to know. How to set everything up and um, how the cheat worked. And this is just an explanation so I can hear myself talking, basically. <laughs> That's it. Ta-da! Happy cheating! <laughs>